Hey everybody. Today we're learning some tools for unpacking linear regression models in R. In particular, I'm going to be showing three functions from the awesome Broom package, Tidy, Augment, and Glance. I'm going to start by loading up Tidyverse, ISLR2, which is the package that's going to include the data set I'm going to be using, and Broom, which has those three functions that I just mentioned. The work I'm going to be doing here is, in a sense, following up on my recent data analysis of the U.S. College's data set. I'll throw a link to that video up top, and in the comments down below, I'll put a link to my GitHub where you can see the, the code from the full data analysis. Um, before I do anything else, let's just see the data dictionary here really quickly for the college data set. Comes from a 1995 issue of U.S. News and World Reports. It includes 777 colleges with a bunch of different variables like numbers of applications received and so on. I am interested in modeling graduation rates based on three explanatory variables, the logarithm of full-time enrollment, public-private status, and the percentage of the freshman class that comes from the top 25% of their high school. Uh, let's get that model into, into memory here. Okay, great. Um, so in that video, I did a number of linear models. In the end, I did the full additive model, modeling graduation rate in terms of all three of those variables um, with no interaction. Let's summarize that. And the most rough and ready way to do that is with the summary command. And you can just feed it the linear model object that R spits out from the LM command. So the summary of model top. Let me adjust that window to make it look a little nicer. Okay, so um, this is a really useful overall summary in a very rough and ready, dirty fashion. It refreshes your memory about what the actual model is, gives you some overall information about the residuals, a nice little table with the coefficients, including standard error, T value, and P value. And then some information about the overall fit of the model, including residual standard error and R squared. Um, on the other hand, this is not a data frame, so it's not a natural object for us to be working with as data analysts. It's most certainly not tidy. In particular, notice that we've got lots of different kinds of information here. We've got just the overall call, um, some just sort of like, um, formatting coefficients, significance, significance codes, information about individual values here in the residual section, stuff about the coefficients of our model, as well as stuff about the overall fit of the model. So all kinds of different objects floating around. So the functions in the broom package are going to help us tease those things out separately in a much more tidy fashion. So um, functions from broom. And notice when I do each of these functions, the different pieces of, of what we're seeing over here on the right that we're getting out, but how much better the format is. So the first thing I want to show is the tidy function. And just like summary, we feed it the model object. So model top. And tidy is just going to give us back this same table that we had up here. The coefficients along with those same statistics about those coefficients, standard error, T, and P. The difference is we're not getting all that other clutter. Instead of just getting a printout, we're getting an actual data frame. In fact, a tibble. A tibble being a data frame that prints nicer. Um, so this is great. If we have many models, for instance, through bootstrapping, we can um, bind them all together and then use ggplot to, to show them all at once, which is really nice. Um, the second function I want to show is the augment function. And the augment function is going to give us information about um, that relates to the individual values, the individual observations in our model. Same syntax, syntax, augment model top. Since we're getting information about every single one of our observations, this is going to be a data frame with 777 rows. The same number of rows is in our original data frame. So um, this is going to be big. So I should save this and not just print it. Let's save it as model aug and then view it. The output is a tibble, so it would print OK, but it won't show everything I want to show. So let me do it this way. OK, so this is an augmented data frame. It's going to take the original data frame, at least all the variables that are in our model, grad rate, 
log full, private, and top 25%. And um, give us back, um, sorry, it's going to include both those variables as well as a number of other pieces of information about each one of those observations. So for each college in the data set, we get the fitted values, that is the outputs predicted by our model, the residuals, the difference between um, what we actually observe from that value and what the model predicted, and then um, four more columns about discrepancies between our observations and what the model predicted of one sort or another. So um, the hat values are measuring leverage, how far the values are away from um, the um, from the from the model's fitted values in the um, space of the explainer variables. The standardized residuals are measuring how far away the fitted value is from the model in terms of the response variable. And you can think about these sort of on the scale of, uh, of z scores. And you see they're all kind of close to zero. Here's a bigger one that's a little bit bigger than three in absolute value. Cook's distance is modeling the overall influence of the individual or measuring the overall influence of the individual values. So that sort of combines the discrepancy and the leverage, the standardized residual and the hat values. The sigma is giving you the residual standard error of the overall model when this individual value is removed from the model. And so um, if you see a big difference here in one of the values, that's an indication that the value has, um, has more influence as well. Um, I particularly use the um, augmented version of my data frame when I'm doing residual plots in particular. So you see you've got the fitted values and the residuals right here. I have a whole video doing uh, nice residual plots using ggplot. I'll throw a link to that up top. The third function I want to show is capturing the overall information, overall summary information about the model, um, in particular about the model fit. And that's the glance function. And so I want to glance at model top. This is going to be a data frame with exactly one row, but it's got a bunch of columns. So let me save this as well and then view it. So how about we call it, uh, I don't know, model glance. Not be too creative in my names today. Okay, so if you remember the bottom of my summary command gave me stuff about residual standard error, R squared and so on. That's the kind of stuff that I'm seeing right here. Overall, um, evaluation of the model fit. So R squared, of course, is giving us the percentage in the response variable that can be explained by the variation in the explanatory variables. Adjusted R squared is imposing a penalty for putting additional variables in our model. We know that adding even noise variables into our model will always drive the R squared down at least a little bit. Adjusted R squared tries to account for that and tries to penalize so we don't overfit. I won't go into all of this in depth but you'll see that we've got um, the um, overall residual standard error. We've got the F statistic, the P value of the overall model, as well as some other values, some other things um, describing the model that we could use to compare various models, such as the Akaike information criteria and the Bayesian information criteria. Um, for each of those lower values are typically better. By the way, knobs is just number of observations, so it's nothing, nothing too extraordinary there. Um, those are the big three functions I wanted to show. I think the next step with, with this would be to actually do a little bootstrapping to get a lot of different models to really show off the strength of the broom package. I think you need to get a lot of different models and start combining um, the outputs of these functions into single data frames. For instance, in this model um, glance output, it's, you can very easily imagine having 10 different models that are all R, bind, R binded into a single data frame that we can then compare, for instance, using the AIC.